morning everybody thank you for pressing play i wanted to upload a video entitled faith in the face of adversity um this is an awesome um time for me to even speak about this because for the last three weeks these have been some very very trying times it seems like there's been a lot of opposition um against what i know god uh, ha has in, in store for me the will of god for me and i know that in the face of adversity it is so important and crucial that i hold on to the faith in god's word and hold on to god's hand because the word of god is not vain you will never see the word of god unfulfilled if God is giving you a word, if God is giving a promise to you, if you look back on the Bible, there was never a time that God did not fulfill a promise. So we must hold on to faith in the face of adversity. You know, adversity is just simply something opposing you, something that makes it harder in the time of crisis, in a time of tragedy, in a time of distress, in a time of hardship. I mean, the list literally goes on and on and on. And unfortunately, you and I are not exempt for, from the face of adversity. Adversity can really make or break break you. So how do we hold on to the promises of God, which are yes and amen in the face of adversity? It's to know the word of God first, pertaining to whatever it is that you're going through. And you may say, okay, Doris, I'm not there yet. Um, I can't off the you know top of my mind verbatim recite a scripture pertaining to stress or uh, depression or unforgiveness or whatever it is anger or rage how do i know what the word of god says and i'm not able to go to church every sunday i know a place where you can go that is the absolute place of guaranteed revelation it, it is your bible ladies and gentlemen if you don't have one simply get one um in the back of your bible everyone should have one in the back of the bible there's an index version and in the index version it just basically breaks down different words and different categories of what you may be going through and yours may be depression yours may be unforgiveness yours may be adultery yours may be fits of rage the back of the bible is a good place to go and you could just simply jot down in whatever scripture it will give you many examples many texts and many scriptures that you can go to but whichever one jumps out at your heart, take that one and you meditate on it. You read it over and over and over again and ask God to allow it to permeate your heart. So faith in the faith uh, in the face of adversity, um, Matthew 17, verse 20. It tells us that all we have to do is have the faith the size of a mustard seed. And you will be able to tell whatever mountain that stands in front of you. Be thou removed. And that mountain shall be removed. And nothing will be impossible for you. I have here, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you can see. But I have a little jar for me. Halfway filled. Not even halfway filled. Because it doesn't even take that much. Like the Bible says. All you have to do is have the faith the size of a mustard seed. And it's so small when it's in your hand. Without my glasses, ladies and gentlemen, I would not be able to see it at all. But in the face of adversity, faith will keep you rooted. Faith will keep you. Um, and faith will give you the strength to stand on what God has promised you. Faith will give you the strength to not be moved and um, in the face of opposition, adversity, in the times of discouragement. You have to know that you know that you have a word from God. And that word from God is yes and amen, meaning that it will not return empty. God fulfills his promises to his children. So in the face of adversity, take whatever it is. It may be the scripture. You need to know the scripture and what the Bible says about faith. And there are many, many, many examples of faith. There are many um, different examples and illustrations in the Bible. I will use um, Paul for an example. Paul, he once was an um, accuser of the Christians. He absolutely hated them. He, he stood against everything that they stood for. He wanted to make them out of a lie. He, he gave them so much opposition, so much just distress. I could just imagine the person that he was. And it's because that he believed that what he was doing was right. I mean, he persecuted them. He had them stoned and even down to the point where he allowed them to be murdered. He wanted them to be murdered. But faith 
set Paul free. See, faith was, um, F Paul was faith, uh, face to face at one point with Christ. And Christ just simply asked him, why are you persecuting me? And this encounter with Christ, it changed his life. So everything that we want, everything that we need is on the other side of us activating that mustard seed of faith. See, if Paul did not believe in, in Christ, if Paul, he could have just said, you know, no, I was raised this way and I believe that this is what it is. He could have absolutely just, he could have, he could have absolutely not received salvation he could have absolutely stayed where he was but because of his faith his faith set him free and when his faith set him free his name was no longer his name was Saul at that point but the Lord I, when God does something I realize he changes your name he should he changed the name of everyone just like Abraham Abraham wasn't Abraham at that point he was Abram and Sarah wasn't Sarah it was Sarai so everyone that the Lord the good Lord used he changed them now you may say okay well God didn't change my name and I just accepted him last week but no he may, he did he did not change your name but he changed what's on the inside of you it says who the son sets free is free indeed who the sun sets free is free indeed. In spite of adversity, you may still be in the in the midst of um, bondage or sin that you've been praying. It may be smoking cigarettes. It may be alcohol. It may be fornication. It may be a relationship that you know is not God ordained. And you've been praying and you feel like you just don't have the strength to do it. You may be doing it in your own strength. But when you activate that mustard seed of faith, that measure of faith that we all have, it's not just me, it's not just you. Christ has placed down a measure of faith in each of us. And in the face of adversity, in the face of the midst of the storm, in the face of sin, in the face of a bondage that you think that you want to be free from, but you don't think you have the power to do it. Activate the faith that Christ has given you. Activate the, Christ, the, the, faith, the faith that Christ has given each of us. And through that measure of faith, guess what? It sets us free. And there will be nothing impossible for us. If this amount of faith that seems so insufficient, harmless, and if you were walking past it on the streets, you wouldn't even see it because it's so small. It seems so minute and insufficient. But Christ is saying that's all you have to have is that measure of faith and he is able to do the rest. So I just pray that this helps you um, as it has helped me. I love to get little trinkets or little examples. Uh, the word of God is the best example. I just really want to re-elaborate on that. If you don't know the word of God for what you're going through. It is crucial that you go to God and you ask him to open your heart. And as you begin to read his word, allow the words to permeate your heart. Allow the words to renew you and to transform your mind. Because the reason why we stay in sin, the reason why we stay in these bondages of our minds and our emotions, and we allow these things to consume us is because our mind has not been transformed form or be renewed Romans 12 1 and 2 it says do not conform to the things of this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind and unfortunately ladies and gentlemen we have to do this daily because my flesh wants to tell me um, that I can't do it but my spirit is saying, I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus, whom strengthens me. So the, the two are always in opposition of one another. They're always fighting against each other because the two are contrary. But when you allow the word of God to come in and permeate your heart, you know that you know without a shadow of doubt that I am more than a conqueror in the face of adversity, in the face of trial, in the face of crises, in the face of hardship. I am not defined by the things that I'm going through. I am more than a conqueror. So I just want to encourage each of you. You may not want to get a bottle and fill it with mustard seeds, but this is just something I want to continue to remind myself that when I feel like I have no faith, it's a lie from the enemy. Christ has given me a measure of faith and I need to hold on to it. And while I'm holding on to the faith of Christ and faith that God has given me, I need to know the word of God. And it gets us through the face of adversity. So whatever you're going through, I just want you to know that you are not defined by that. No longer give in to your emotions because your emotions are very, very, very deceitful. 
They feel so real and they can consume us at times. But just because it feels so real, it does not mean that they are accurate. The enemy plays tricks with our minds and our emotions daily. That's why the word of God says that we are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And our emotions, our emotions will have us doing some absolutely crazy things. Have you doing things that you know are outside of the will of God. That's why you have to know what the word of God says. And you have to ask God daily to crucify the flesh because the Bible says that there's not one good thing in it. One good thing in the flesh. There is not one good thing in the flesh. So because I know that my flesh is always opposing the, my spirit man and my spirit man is no longer my own. My spirit man is Christ now living on the inside of me. So I just want to encourage you to go to God and ask him to allow you to understand what that truly means. That measure of faith that he desires for us all to have. My mustard seed was running away, but I wasn't going to let it get away, y'all. That mustard seed of faith that God says that all we have to have and what Whatever mountain, whatever opposes you, whatever stands in front of you, whatever Goliath it is, that measure of faith activates it and it moves it out of the way and it no longer has power over you. So we have to understand in the midst of trial, in the midst of hardship, in the midst of being still and knowing that he is God and God isn't speaking. And it seems like you're waiting and you've been praying and crying and asking for something. And it's like an empty prayer. I want you to know that God allows these things also, these storms and these crises and these things to come along to increase your faith. He wants you to know how much that you shall be dependent on him. So I have realized in the last three weeks that in, in times of adversity, when these things come, my flesh wants to tell me that you shouldn't be in this place. You should be stronger than that. How could you feel this way? How could you feel that way? But what Christ is trying to let me know that, daughter, you are to renew your mind every day. Allow me to renew your mind. And in renewing your mind, how do I renew my mind, Doris? How can I renew my mind? Be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do not conform to the traditions and the customs of this world that we live in. See, we live in the world, but we are no longer in of the world because we are now Christ. We are now the hands and the feet of Christ here on the earth. Not saying you are God. I just want to reiterate that you, we are not Christ himself, but we are a piece of him. We are made in his image. So the renewing of your mind is crucial. Having faith is crucial because it keeps you knowing what the word of God says pertaining to what you're going through is absolutely needed. So I pray that. Whatever you're going through, that through prayer, through supplication and thanksgiving, that you go to God and ask him for that measure of faith to be activated. You already have it. It's already yours. Christ has already placed it down on the inside of you and it's on the inside of me. You see that it is so small, but that right there can move the very obstacle that stands in front of you. And it may be fear. It may be a sickness that seems like you just live your whole life in this place and you think that you have to get used to it. But that's not who God is. See, we serve a big God and he is so much bigger than your circumstances. And until you realize that, we, you, we actually stay in circumstances that the Lord is eagerly willing to free us from. So if you will, I just want to say a quick prayer with each of you all and pray my strength in the Lord that I continue to go boldly and do what he calls me to do in these last and evil times. So Father God, we thank you for a day and an opportunity such as this. Lord God, we are all struggling with adversity and opposition and our flesh wants us to give up. Our flesh wants us to look at the storms and the mountains and allow them to be magnified and have us to think that we are hopeless. But we bind up those thoughts that come from the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. And we declare over our life just what your word says. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who strengthens us and who the son sets free is free indeed. Lord, we ask that in the midst of adversity, in the midst of these storms, that you increase our faith, that we know what your word says and we hold on to your word and we don't allow us to ourselves and our flesh to consume us 
In the face of adversity, we ask that you will permeate our hearts, renew our minds daily, and you be ye glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. So I pray that on this Sunday, that whatever it is, whatever mountain, whatever uh, Goliath that stands in front of you, that you know that through faith, it is powerless. It is defeated in the name of Jesus. I pray that this has helped you because I'm encouraged. So have a wonderful day.